So while the title card and the title is saying Dura-Ace, I can't be 100% certain what I'm about to show you is in fact Dura-Ace. Let's get that out of the way. I'm 99% certain, but there is a slim chance that it might be something else. Now, what we have seen is Shimano historically launches products one group set per year or in the or one series of group set per year. So what we'll usually get is Dura Ace one year, both mechanical and electronic, and then we'll get Ultegra the next year with the trickle down technology. And then we'll get 105 again with further trickle down technologies where you know the high tech, high expense manufacturing techniques are, are brought down a little bit, but things like the shifting performance and the geometry is kept. That just kind of results in slightly heavier or slightly less stiff or, or less exotic materials. But for a fact, we know that within six months, Shimano is going to drop a new group set and it's going to be wireless. Now there's been all sorts of idle speculation and I'm not here to idly speculate it. I mean, I, I love doing it, but this is actually a fact because there is an FCC filing and the FCC is the Federal Communications Commission in the United States. You have to file if you have something, you have to file publicly, I should say, if you have something that has an RF transmitter. So something that can transmit. And usually that also includes some level of receive because most communication is bi-directional now. It's the, maybe it's a, I, I sent a shift, did you get it? and you have to confirm that's a transmit back, so that still is transmission. Or in the case of, of like SRAM, the rear derailleur actually sends the Ant Plus communication to tell your group set what gear it's in. So in this case, we've actually got a new FCC filing from Shimano, and it just says rear derailleur. Now, the internal pictures are temporarily um, private. So for, they have six months of privacy on that. The internal schematic though, that's unlimited privacy, but they have to put an FCC ID on it. And that has to be public right away, which means we've got some line art to show, but also we got to see the actual I'll say the, the actual report. The report actually points to a module. And then from that module, we know what is, what is the only transmitter in it. And from that, we can figure out the Shimano R9200 Dura-Ace shifting protocols. So why don't we take a, a quick look at that? So while we could normally go and try and use the, the FCC website, it's, it's really not that good. It is really difficult to search for. It's very, very cryptic on, on their searching system. I've used it before, but I really, really hate it. But I stumbled onto it from FCCID.io. I was uh, trying to look up a company and WY7, which is Shimano's ID is, uh, was basically one of the last ones. So I just clicked into it and I happened to, to notice Actually, I'm, I'm in a thing there. But when I, I ended up here, so I was just going to do a search from here or, or change it after. But then I, I just said, ah, scroll it all down. And I noticed rear derailleur. And what's interesting, it's filed four days ago. A wireless module was filed uh, five days ago. And the Swan 3 module was filed months and months ago. But this is just a little module that, you know, you, you use for, for building things. I've used these modules. I have an upcoming project using a, a module based around this as well. It allows you to, to shortcut a lot of the FCC regulation stuff. So they, Shimano usually builds this with a company called Tayo Yudin. So that's not a big deal. Um, this wireless module I find kind of interesting because they have six months of confidentiality for things like, um, you know, uh, schematics have indefinite uh, internal photos. Internal and external photos have six month confidentiality. However, labeling and location 
this is too small in a bad location. It's not possible to indicate the FCC ID, blah, blah, blah on the surface because the dimensions are too small. So we'll put it in the manual. And so in order to do that, they need approval to do it. So this is their antenna modules under here, three connections and some sort of other looks like either this could be for potentially for programming, but doubtful. Um, because they have these dots here that look like these would be your, your programming and debug stuff. Um, this might be going to a battery or something like that. These three connections, they line up awfully close to the three connections found on many of the electronic um, group sets right now that have like two E-tubes and a, and a sprint shift or, or some of them now have three E-tubes or two E-tube connections. And this port is exactly, like nearly exactly the shape that goes into that little block that's under your shifters. And so that, that's kind of an idealized location. So this is likely their shifter system and it doesn't have a module. It actually has a built in, an onboard um, module of some kind. So we don't know exactly, even the, even the test report doesn't really tell us, um, you know, it doesn't seem to have uh, the word BLE indicated for their, their, their test setups, antenna conditions. You know, it's, mm, yeah. We, we basically know it's a voltage. And honestly, not much else. But, uh, actually, let me go back here. The derailleur, this here, Shimano Inc. Rear Derailleur 3GK1. Again, we're locked out for six months, so the likelihood they'll be launching a... Uh, product in under six months you will you will see it in the wild in less than six months guaranteed 100 percent you know we have a test report and we'll get to that but labeling and location and if you look at this mechanical design this and compare it to an existing shimano derailleur it's pretty darn identical this is the geared down output shaft that runs through here and it's it's connected and essentially it rotates this block which drives the parallelogram and this is nearly identical to an existing Shimano uh, DI2 derailleur. So it, it, it's kind of interesting because it does have a wireless module inside, but it also looks like this could be E-tube. So it might actually be, and this is, now here's the speculation, it might actually be that this is a wireless or wired system. But this contains that uh, SWAN3 module, and we can see that by looking at the actual test report and it says contains the SWAN3 module. What else does it have? Well, Bluetooth, low energy and N. That's interesting because, I mean, the NRF52 that we saw in the, the that module, well, I mean, you can really only use Bluetooth, low energy. You can use a proprietary communication or you can use ANT and the, the only other real combination you can easily do is Bluetooth Low Energy and Ant. You can do others, you can, but it, it gets, it's, it's much more difficult as I'm currently finding out. But I've already proven that I can reverse engineer protocols on Bluetooth Low Energy, albeit with a bit of help. Thanks, Andy. And I've already proven that I can reverse engineer Ant Plus protocols that aren't published. Thanks, Digital Logic Analyzer. So, we, we know for a fact that it's going to be on these two. That means it's going to be crackable. It means possible to make a third party shifter for the upcoming Shimano system. Now, I mean, this could be, this could just be an architectural change. It may still theoretically be E-tube, but it doesn't make sense for the shifters and the derailleur to have a transmitter. They, because they could be following a Shimano style sorry, they could be following a SRAM style system where their ant transmitter is in the rear derailleur. It could be that. Um, so they're eliminating the need for D fly, but it doesn't make sense to 
to have this wireless module that looks very much either like a, a I mean, worst case scenarios, I'm very wrong, it's a front derailleur and, and likely scenario, it is a shifter. Why would that have a wireless module? Doesn't make sense. Unless this system, these two things work together to be wireless. Now, this could actually be an update to GRX, highly unlikely with how old GRX is, but we've only seen a, a rear derailleur and a wireless module. Usually things take a little while, so you know, within if we see a, a front derailleur within the next month, I'm going to say this is Durace. Um, if we don't see one, it could be a, a final update for you know DI three or something for a mountain bike or or GRX, something that has a one by drivetrain. It became a little bit of speculation on my part in the end. There's a few things I certainly can't figure out. Like it, it's likely has to be a wireless system. And the reason being is you're not gonna put a transmitter in your shifter and a transmitter or transmitter receiver, transceiver in your shifter and a transceiver in your derailleur without having them likely talk to each other. But we have seen kind of like the connectors don't fully make a lot of sense. The, you know, the, the rear derailleur looked like it had a, a, a bump um, very reminiscent of the old designs that has basically a uh, could be an e-tube connection so it is possible that this might be a a user choice situation you might actually be able to choose legacy e-tube and have all this amazing compatibility throughout the years you can go so long as the the gear numbers line up it's mix and match all you want like you can go and you put six road derailers into that system without it complaining like six legit road derailers like brake shifters just display them all out and it won't complain um so it may be for like you know where shifting is a hundred percent it must work 100 percent of the time because wireless can't wireless you know you will will experience delayed shifts. You will experience interference. You will experience shifts queuing up like they do in the SRAM system. And then like, oh, finally I got to talk to the derailleur and it dumps six shifts, but you only meant to shift once and you're just confused. And you're just, why isn't it going? And then your derailleur flies to the other end of the cassette. Um, and that, that does happen. So like it might be for, for pros, you know, we're still using a wired system and it would eliminate you know the need for multiple batteries and for people who are like wireless is innovation sort of it's more of an innovation for oes to save save a couple of bucks on bike assembly because it's only real advantage is you know no wires a clean cockpit cleaner cockpit yeah sure that's important to lots and lots of people but in terms of technical innovation it's actually a step backwards in terms of reliability and and that's just you know, that's just one of the facts of wireless. You know, anyone who complains about dropouts on Ant will, you know, it's the same thing for shifter. It is, it is not using a better, more robust, improved technology. It's, it's all in the same league as Ant and BLE. So there is certainly that. It's it's definitely going to be interesting to see. And I mean, it's you'll see it, um, you know, who knows whether they'll deliver, but they'll publicly announce it within six months. So, you know, uh, those looking for forward to, you know, getting the Shimano level of shifting performance, and, but they are die hard for, for wireless. Well, you've got less than six months to the announcement and yeah, you know, so with that, I mean, I, I'd be interested in just picking up a, a derailleur and a shifter and not having to buy a full group set in order to try and reverse engineer some of this, because if it is Ant and BLE, man, I'm going to try and break that protocol and I'm going to try and build my own shifting systems. So that's, that's going to be fun to look forward to, you know, I'm sure I'm not going to, going to be happy about spending a thousand dollars on a group set that then sits on, on the shelf or a thousand dollars on a couple of pieces of a group set, but I'm certainly willing to do that. Keep an eye on this channel. There's going to be a, a bunch of stuff happening in the next month or so as I get ready to actually launch a product. It's a little delayed and we can, we can thank uh, Mr. Virus for that, but it's coming along and we're down to basically, uh, I just need to get my packaging in and then there'll be product to ship and we'll be ready to launch, the, um, you know, lift embargoes for reviews and stuff. So, you know, some people can figure it out. It's, it's in that realm of indoor and outdoor biking and, um, you know, it's hopefully something you'll keep on your bike forever. So 
keep an eye out for that. That's coming pretty soon. That's kind of why I haven't been making any videos about any of this stuff, but this was just, this was just too interesting for me to let go. So take care.